Hello, this is Weekend Handicapper from WeekendHandicapper.com. In this video, we are going to discuss form cycles in horse racing, why they are important, how to spot a good form cycle, and how to spot a bad form cycle. So what is a form cycle? So as it pertains to handicapping horse races and in thoroughbred horse racing, a form cycle is simply how has the race performed or how has the horse performed in recent races? What has the horse done in the past three, four, five, even six races? Depends on how frequent that horse might race. That is what a form cycle is. And it's up to you as a handicapper to spot what kind of condition, what kind of form the horse is in. So simply put, it's how the horse has done recently. What have you done for me lately? Form cycle can also, or a, a criteria component of a form cycle, is how is the horse trending? This is especially true with uh, young horses, two-year-olds going into their three-year-old careers. Lightly raced horses, you don't have much to go on in terms of handicapping and handicapping data. So it's up to you to project how the horse is going to trend. Is it trending upwards? Is it trending downwards in a negative negative fashion? So how do you do that? How do you spot trending horses that are improving or going the wrong direction? It's very tough. Needless to say, it's very tough because it's pure speculation. Now we can, you know, that's kind of what handicapping is, taking the data which you do have or the races, seeing the races that the horse has ran with your, you know, on videos and, and things like that to make a determination of how the horse is trending. But I will, in this video, kind of give you some tips on what to look for on uh, whether or not a horse is trending positively or negatively, especially with older horses, four-year-olds and up. Has the horse seen better days? Has the glory days are they in the past and you see this a lot with horses that were in the kentucky derby or big grade one uh, stakes races a lot of people that don't bet on horses that often will s see that name or see the races that the horse was in and just automatically assume this is a good horse which th they could be right but it, the horse could have seen better days and it peaked already Right. So you always want to kind of assess and put in the forefront of your mind. Is this horse trending positively or negatively? So let's talk about some of the ways that you can speculate on those kind of trends. So one of the first things that you want to kind of think about when you handicap a race and look at the conditions of the race and the class level of the race is why is this horse in in this race to begin with is it dropping in class well what do you th why do you think that horse is dropping in class is it dropping in class to get an easy victory against a less talented field or is something wrong with the horse and the horse is being dropped in class in the hopes that somebody will claim that horse so you always want to one of the first things when handicapping is like what in the world is this horse doing in this race is it in it to win it? Are the connections, uh, does the trainer put this horse in this particular race because he or she thinks the horse has a shot to win? Or is it coming off a layoff and just needs a race to get the rust off and they are thinking ahead two or three races? Or like I said, is it being put in this race in the hopes that somebody will take the horse off their hands uh, because they feel that this horse has seen better days. Now, when you talk about form, it, it's hand in hand with condition. So what's what kind of form is the horse in? Same thing as what kind of condition is the horse in? What's its current condition? One way to kind of evaluate and assess current condition is looking at the effects of recent races. Now, a lot of handicappers don't even consider this. And so what this means is 
in recent races, has it, that horse been getting everything its own way, got an easy lead, hadn't been contested at all? Uh, there wasn't a big speed duel or a pace scenario. Everything favored that horse. The post position, the the pace scenario, et cetera. Or has this horse been battling in these races and ran in all kinds of traffic trouble and and just just seems like it's in the, the horse's recent races has just been in situations and scenarios that it's took a lot out of the horse and that could wear on a horse uh, just like any other athlete. So you want to kind of evaluate whether it's through the past performances or um, on video, you know, watching race replays. Now, speaking of past performances, ideally I would love to put some examples up of uh, past performances that I can show you examples of horses trending in the right direction going in the wrong direction but there's copyright issues with with sharing past performances without people's permission the owners of those past performances places such as drf daily racing forum brisnet i've reached out to those uh companies and try to get their permission to use uh past performances equibase is another one in my videos unfortunately they don't even contact me back uh, they don't respond so without their permission i don't want to be uh using their past performances uh, in a public format because it clearly states that you have to the unauthorized use of these these tools is prohibited unless you got permission uh, unfortunately they're not responding back to me so i can't use them in these videos I guess I could, but I'm running a big risk. Playing the horses is risky enough. <laughs> I don't need any more risk. Uh, so that's why I don't, unfortunately, uh, have examples. But hopefully these concepts concepts, and principles can help you out. So current condition again, what are the effects of the horse's recent races? Has it been getting easy leads, easy pace scenarios? Everything's going its own way. Or has it been battling in every race that it's in? And that takes a lot of, out of a horse. Recent workouts. So when you talk about a horse's current form, it's obviously clear that you need to talk about how the horse is working out. Again, just like professional athletes. If somebody is coming off the shelf and uh, Tiger Woods is a great example. This guy seemed like he has back surgeries every other week. And he, even the great Tiger Woods, one of the greatest golfers of all time, can't come back the first tournament back. And, you, you know, I, I, that wouldn't be a good bet. I hate betting against Tiger Woods, but the odds are a golfer coming off a of back surgery is not going to win the very first tournament that he comes back in or she comes back in. Same thing with Michael Jordan. If you remember way back when, when Michael Jordan came back from his little hiatus where he played baseball or tried to play baseball and he was wearing number 45, the great Air Jordan was rusty and he needed some time to get back. So if you look at it from a horse racing perspective, Michael Jordan and Tiger Woods aren't in good form right off the bat, right? They need to work out. They need to be consistent, get the rust off, get some games, get some golf tournaments under their belt, horses, get some races under their belt before they come back. Now, some horses are ready to row off a layoff. That's a issue a topic for another video about layoffs. Matter of fact, I think I've made a couple already about it, and you can check it out on, on this YouTube channel. But recent workouts is what you want to look for. How has the horse been working out? One of, the very, one of the very first things as it pertains to form is has it been working out consistently or are there spotty workouts? Is there big gaps in between uh, workouts? So diff it differs, you know, different handicappers have different beliefs, but typically, you know, every 11 days, every 14 days, some 
handicappers like to see you every seven days. But long as it's spaced out, I would say 11, every 11, 14 days, a horse has been working out, then you can kind of assume that it, the, it, the horse is in decent condition, decent form. But what you really want to look for are sharp workouts. Uh, look in the, wor the uh, workout lines at the bottom, and, and you can find these on your past performances, at the bottom of each horse's uh, information there. The very bottom, you'll see the workouts. So what is a sharp workout? Well, preferably you want two or more recent sharp workouts. Uh, that's what you want to look for to, to give clues on whether or not a horse is in good form or coming into the race in good form. So what are sharp workouts? Well, it depends on the distance the horse has been working out. So if, if the horse has been working out four or five furlongs, then you want to work out that's about 12 seconds per, four, uh, per furlong. Uh, you want something, if it's at six furlongs, if it's been racing at six furlongs, Something faster than a minute and 13 seconds, a minute and 15 seconds, let's say. And if for some reason the horse is working out at seven furlongs, you want something faster than a minute 30, minute 27, minute 28, somewhere around there. That's considered a sharp workout. Again, it's based on the different furlongs that the horse is working out. But that's a definition or a good barometer of sharp workouts. So if you see one, preferably two, uh, recent workouts that you can classify as sharp, then you know that horse is probably in pretty good condition, pretty good form, and should run a competitive race. Now, one of the most popular things that handicappers, even people that don't play the races that often, uh, kind of look at are speed figures. We can do a series of videos on speed figures. But as it pertains to form and form cycle, you want to look at, there's a concept called three and out, improving speed figures. Now, some handicappers will say three is too much and you're risking it with three to at least having a nice pair of speed figures in a row is what you want to look, look for. And again, I apologize because I can't show any examples on past performances where you could clearly see it but just think of it like this so say a horse has been running races four or five races the the races in the past let's say four races back it ran a speed figure of 78 three races back it ran a speed figure of 77 two races back all of a sudden, that horse has went up to, and it's raced 82, a speed figure of 82. Then its very last race that is it raced, the last time out, we call it, the horse raced an 83. Well, in comparison to its other speed figures, that's a nice pair of speed figures. So some handicappers believe that, well, that was it. That horse can be, you can assume that horse is going to regress because it's raced two nice speed figures, the best it's ever had. Others will say, and I'm kind of in that camp, where I'm going to give this horse another shot. It depends on the odds, of course. If the odds are that if this horse is a decent price, I'm going to bet it one more time that it can keep improving. So that in our example, the horse might run another 83 or an 85 even. Then it probably is going to come back to earth and regress a little bit. But that horse is in good form if you're looking at it from a speed figure perspective. Now, if for some reason this last two – now, again, take this with a grain of salt because if it's a young horse, you know, a two-year-old or a lightly raced horse or – uh, a three-year-old early on in his three-year-old career or campaign, those horses can jump up big time. We don't know their potential, really. You have to, to speculate big time. But if it's an older horse, four years old and up, 
and it's ran its two lifetime bests. All of a sudden, it's raced 10 races, and all of a sudden, there's there's two speed figures that are anomalies. So they're a lot larger, a lot higher than that horse has ever done before. There's always exceptions to the rule. This is handicapping. This is gambling. But you should be cautious of it. And you might want to just kind of take notes on your own of, and just for your own benefit to see if that theory is, in fact, true. Do horses that run their two lifetime best speed figures in a row, especially veteran horses that all of a sudden are racing out of their mind and they're, they're coming up with really good speed figures lately, if they do that twice, two lifetime best speed figures in a row, they could regress. We call it bouncing. That horse could bounce after running those two top lifetime figures. You always hear me say in these videos that the price determines the bet. And same thing here. If you got a horse that ran its lifetime, two lifetime best speed figures, and it's eight to one, I'm going to take another shot <laughs> and see if this horse can keep this streak going. At eight to one, at nine to five, it's another story if it's a heavy favorite or something. So keep in mind speed figures, the concept of three and out, which means three good speed figures, or if that horse has improved uh, speed figure wise, three and out. If you see that happen three times in a row, more than likely that horse has done improving, and it's either going to stay there or probably going to regress a little bit in terms of speed figures and get a lower speed figure. Look for a pair of nice speed figures. That's another good sign. But be weary of, or leery, of two lifetime best speed figures in a row. Now, declining form. This is something you want to be cautious of because it burns a lot of money. If if you're back on a horse, let's use the you know the triple crown Kentucky Derby horse that that people are enamored with because they remember it on television racing in the Kentucky Derby. Well, that doesn't mean this horse is in good form now, and and its best days is probably going to be behind him. So how do you spot that? kind of declining form well if that horse if a horse has had a bad performance and there's no excuse for that horse having that bad of performance then they drop in class the next time that they race you know that's a red flag some will view it as dropping in class that horse has the class advantage well yeah, maybe if it was in good form and, and it was healthy, but it might not be. It Something might be wrong with the horse. It's not competitive anymore. So if you see or if you notice or if you remember that that horse had a bad performance last time out with no excuses, no real reasons that it should have had a bad performance, then all of a sudden their connections, meaning their trainer, the owners, drop it in class, that should be a red flag. The majority of the time, that's a red flag and something you should avoid betting on. How bad is the horse getting beat? So is it competitive in its races? Or it, it, as soon as it, about halfway through the race, you're like, this horse don't have a shot. <laughs> I, I just I just wasted some more money on this horse. And believe me, I've had plenty of horses that burn my money time after time. I keep giving them uh, excuses and, and reasons to bet the horse again. And finally, they just, I have to stop betting them. Well, one of the criteria of how bad a horse is getting beat is, is that horse getting beat by more than two or three links with no excuses? There's a big difference if the horse got blocked in traffic, stumbled at the start, uh, jockey lost his whip, what lost the reins. What, you know, there's, we all know all those excuses in horse racing. But if that horse had no legitimate excuse for losing by more than two or three links, then that's a red flag that, and a sign that that might 
that horse might be declining in form. Going back to workouts, are they lackluster? Are they spotty? Has this horse has, has no recorded workouts in a month or so? That should be a red flag that this horse isn't in good form. Or even if it's been working out, you know, it's it's finishing. You know, if you look in the workouts, you can see how well the horse worked out as compared to other horses, you know, five out of 30 or or two out of 15 or two out of 20. Well, that horse, that, that number's high. You know, it, it, it hasn't been, you know, impressive of, at all in its workouts. That's a sign that that horse probably's in declining form. So lackluster or spotty workouts. And then finally, when you look at your past performances and, this, and you have a horse, again, that used to be good, that used to be a household name, maybe. But here recently, that horse is constantly having to take breaks in between races. Like, it, it can't race a couple times a month or, uh, you know, every eight weeks or something like that. That horse is, like, taking off for months at a time. Uh, I, I think I said eight weeks that that's a layoff right there too pretty much you want a horse that is consistently running without having to take months off a year off so spotty so inconsistent in its races that that's a cause for concern and you're taking a huge gamble with horses like that because they're not in good form again you want to bet on horses that are routinely working out and are in pretty good shape so speaking of what could when when we talk about form cycles these are some of the questions that should always be at the forefront of your mind what condition is the horse in has it how has it been performing in these recent races the past three four five six races has it been competitive in those races has it been taking layoffs in between some of these races? Why is the horse in today's race? Is it in it to win it? Or do you think that horse is in it if it's a claiming race to be claimed? Is the horse in it because the, the connections are looking two or three races down the road? How is the horse trending? This is huge. It's, it's purely speculative. But it's so important, especially with younger horses, that you got to get good at seeing how the speed figures are progressing or if they are progressing or are they regressing? Are they declining with each start? How is the horse trending? Is, does the horse seem like it's getting better with each and every start? Or does it seem like that horse has peaked three races ago and it's seen better days, and now it's on the downward trend. That is one of the most important things you could do as a handicapper, is speculate, and based on logic, based on the facts and the information that you got, which, again, are past performances, speed figures, pace figures, uh, the class levels has been working out, the, the workout, or racing in, the workouts, all that can be assumed or thought of to make an educated decision when it comes to horses trending upwards or d downwards. Can't say this enough. How is the horse working out? Has it performed consistently or has it been working out consistently? Has it fired at least two sharp workouts? You know, at least one, but preferably two sharp workouts does it work out consistently that is a telltale sign if you especially a young horse if you don't have much many races to go on or the horse is coming off a layoff that work looking at those workouts preferring those workouts is huge and has it been competitive does it seem like every race it seemed like it the horse brings it uh here recently, there's a, a horse called Jesus's team. That horse, it hardly ever wins, 
But it seems like it's always a factor. It seems like it's always second or third. And you it's a good bet to include it in your verticals, your exactus trifectus. A horse like Jesus's team, you feel confident that you know that horse is in good form. It's going to bring it each and every time that it, that horse leaves the starting gate. But then you got other horses that aren't competitive. Yeah, they look good on paper. Yeah, the past performances and a few races back, it's been racing, you know, very competitively and it's been finishing consistently. But here recently, the horse hasn't been. With no excuses, it has no reason for to be finishing two or three links off or behind the winner of the race. So has the horse been competitive? So some of the, these questions here can really, if you can honestly put your biases aside and, you know, you're, you're enamored with certain horses of what they did a year or two ago, if you could put all that aside and honestly answer these questions, I think you're going to get a good sense of whether or not that horse is in good form and what that current horse's form cycle is. And you do that with each and every horse, especially with the favorites, because uh, that's what you're trying to do, trying to beat those favorites, trying to knock those favorites out, try to bet against those favorites. So especially from a favorite perspective, you want to ask these questions, but preferably with each and every horse you handicap. These questions that you see here, are are essential to determining a horse's form cycle and what kind of form it's in. All right, so this if you like this video, hit that like button. If you hadn't already, uh, subscribe to Weekend Handicapper and this YouTube channel. You hit that notification bell so you can get all the latest tips, tools, and resources to help you make some money betting on thoroughbred horse racing. And check out WeekendHandicapper.com if you like. And until next time, happy handicapping, smart wagering.